out the camera. I got to start off with my, my, my I got I got an artist I'm an artist I'm producing. You know what I'm saying? Down his manager. So. Yeah. Yo, born. Show them how we do this, man. BTBTV. We bully the bullies. No run, no retreat. Yeah. BTB TV. One more time for y'all in the back. Y'all slow ninjas. Rah. Yo. John Gotti flow. Rap pie below. Escobar status, rap game, call it your own. I can show you how you lay back and watch your pockets grow. Stay away from devious women, end up like Papa Smoke. Y'all wake up every day twitching like, yo, I got a post. I wake up every day mission. It's million dollar notes, dominoes, body drop, rot stink like hollow toast, bro. <laughs> yo, born. Show them how we do this, man. BTBTV. We bully the bullies. No run, no retreat. Yeah. BTBTV. One more time for y'all in the back. Peace to the gods. Right. Yo. John Gotti flow. Rap pie below. Escobar status, rap game, call it your own. I can show you how you lay back and watch your pockets grow. Stay away from devious women, end up like Papa Smoke. Y'all wake up every day twitching, like yo, I got a post. I wake up every day mission. It's million dollar notes, dominoes, body drop, rot stink like hollow toast. Broadway, man, if you know, then you know. I came for everything they said I couldn't have. Got that and then some, and then some. My wins on overload, say you overdose. Your rappers in the tight squeeze and that clutch like Cobra rope. The opie dope, we don't go for that. That's all true. Another tale from the street, death and horror flow. flow. The projects like a ghost trying to haunt your soul. Another tale from the street, homicide the folks who want to play to them gun scream adios. Another tale from the street, black mafia. So dumb, call the young, mixed with Al Capone. Another tale from the street, like an opera show. These kids be acting till they like movie yeah. curtain clothes. Nowadays, your foes are plotting. Hey, that was some Max little boy. Triple sixes, hey. devil on his shoulder, won the death match. Reminiscing when more street ninjas was off the hook. Chasing deeds up off the block. Torn to run and get the force. Blood on pavement. He's 12 years old and he tough to play with. He don't go to playgrounds. That's his fiends who want their main stick. We can't miss. We can hit the target with our hands behind our back. Our eyes closed and half brainless. Don't, don't play, play with us. us. Uh -huh. Another tale from the street. Death for horror flow. flow. The projects like a ghost trying to haunt your soul. Another tale from man, the street. The real I'm man, the TV, real When the play to them guns, green adios. Another tale from the street. Black mafia. So dark, call the young mixed with Al Capone. Another tale from the street, like an opera show. These kids be acting till they like movie curtain clothes. Yeah. BTB TV. The moving man, you're born. You're born. Let's get Shout out to my little brother Chris down. BTB TV. Hold up. I want to hear my little brother real quick. Where's my little, this my little brother right here. Yeah, I want you to hit the head. It's Jersey shit, man. We stand up for each other. All right, let's go. There you go, right there. <laughs> You're born. Show them how we do this, man. Yo, he went, he went to talk about show right here. We bully, we bully the bullies. No run, no retreat. Yeah. BTB. TV. Yo, force. So what up? Time for y'all. <laughs> y'all slow ninjas. Rah. Yo. John Gotti flow. Rap pie below. Escobar status, rap game, call it your own. I can show you how you lay back. 
and watch your pockets grow. Stay away from devious women. End up like Papa Smoke. Y'all wake up every day twitching. Like, yo, I gotta post. I wake up every day mission. If million dollar notes, dominoes, body drop, rot, stink like hollow toes. Broadway, man, if you know, then you know. I came for everything they said I couldn't have. Got that and then some, and then some. My wins on overload. Say you're overdosed. Your rappers in the tight squeeze and that clutch like Cobra rope. The opie dope. We don't go for that. That's all she wrote. Another tale from the street. Death and horror flow. The projects like a ghost trying to haunt your soul. Another tale from the street. Homicide the folks who want to play to them gun scream. Adios. Another tale from the street. Black mafia. So darn cool. The young mixed with Al Capone. Another tale from the street, like an opera show. These kids be acting to their life, movie curtain closed. Nowadays, your foes will plot you wearing Malcolm X hat. No Triple breath. sixes, the devil on his shoulder, won the death match. Reminiscing with more street ninjas was off the hook. Chasing these up off the block. Torn to run and get the force. Blood on pavement. He get the the force. Then he to Blood play. on pavement. He don't go to play around. <laughs> this is fiends who want their veins stick. We can't miss. We can hit the talking with our hands behind our back. Our eyes closed and half brainless. Don't, don't play, play with us. us. Another tale from the street. Death. Death. The horror flow, the projects like a ghost trying to kill so quick. Another tale from the street, homicide the folk who won the play to them guns green adios. Another tale from the street, black mafia. So dark, call the young mix for our home. Another tale from the street, like an opera show. These kids be acting till they like movie curtain close. Yeah, BTBTV. It's the movement, man. Your born, your born. Let's get him. Let's get him. Yo, I want you to have now. Hit up my boy Force video right here, y'all. My boy Force. Salute to my boy Force, Johnny. But he gonna be every Friday. We doing a show together. We gonna we gonna help the youth and we gonna promote this shit, man. We gonna do what we gotta do, yo. Eat them all. Stand up. B X stand up. Mount Vernon, stand up. Stand up. It's the end of days. Let's go. The end of days, days, days. The end of days. Look at those shoes, nigga. Time is it? <laughs> Looking at my Gucci, it's about that time for my fucking force to ignite a rhyme. I heard you was out there snitching hey, on crimes. I'm telling you, you about life after prison. Yeah, that's one of them yo, now. Shout me out. It, yo, no, yo. You went to Brooklyn, got your jiggy jaw broke. The homies called you up and asked you who they want to shoot. You said, nah, dog, and filed a lawsuit. Although I can't label you a snitch for doing that. You use a certified bitch and a rat. Bitch ass bitch. Mama bottle, it's about that time for my fucking force to ignite the rhyme. I know you was out there snitching on crimes, and when I catch you choking, your ass is mine. Eat a wall, PJ's 1989. You couldn't get no money selling nicks and dimes in front of your building, so you came to me. I put your monkey ass on to get some cheese. That's right, that's right, that's right. You even made a song about it. What part of the motherfucking game allows G to video testify and keep up the name? You, you went to the up, grand jury hey. and showed up at trial. Pointed me out in open court like snitching wasn't style. Use a fucking rap. Use a fucking rap. Rap. Use a rap because you testified, and if I squash a rodent ass, that'd be pesticide. Rap, rap. Rap, rap. Rap, rap. Check in my Mavado, it's about that time for my fucking force to ignite the rhyme. I know you was out there snitching on crimes, and when I catch you choke, your ass is mine. I checked with the experts to find your net worth, and found out you're worth less than fucking wet dirt. It says that you're worth less than 25k. I know 25 ways to make 25k. I'll probably make your net worth in 25 days. Hey. Um, 
I drive a G L five five zero. I must. I got move out of state. Here, I rock me coats, cashmere, and step in Kellabee. So why would I ask you for shit, nigga? Please. Oh my gosh. In the days, you said cherry, lemon, water, melon. You celebrate every time they caught a felon. Strawberry, apple, lemon, apricot. After this, choke no choke, you're a livestock. Fucking snitch, rat, bitch. It's so, it's check me. Y'all niggas saying, y'all thinking because he killed a nigga that he's a real nigga. And I told on a real nigga. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on Yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> it's time's up, choke for real. Yo, um, so we're gonna start off, man. Let everybody know where you from and um, how you grew up, man. You know what I'm saying? Johnny Bunting Jr., aka Mighty Force. Force, I'm from the Bronx, Bronx, New York. Um, I'm not from Edenwall, meaning I wasn't born and raised in Edenwall. I got money in Edenwall. I never lived there. Um, I started off as a little kid, nothing extravagant. We wasn't rich. We wasn't nowhere near rich. Tenement buildings, moved to the projects on 169th and Washington, went to school, was a smart kid, little, you know, troublemaker, meaning laughing, joking and stuff like that, nothing crazy. I wasn't toting guns or selling drugs in my early days when I was five, six years old. Just regular guy playing skelly and marbles and things of that nature. My mother got sick when I was nine. She got cancer and then she didn't last a year. So by the time I turned 10, she was on her way out. She died. I had to move to Connecticut to live with some family, my grandmother in Connecticut and my aunt in New Haven. So I went to school there. I was pretty smart. So they put me in a, a program that Yale had. It was called Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, I participated in that. We had Yale students that was like our tutors that was uh, teaching us. And, and we had different subjects like in math and we had logic. And I didn't even know what that was at the time, but it was basically critical thinking showing us how to think and do critical and analyze things. And I actually like that because I, I'm a critical thinker. I just didn't know that they had a subject matter that, you know, honed your skills to that nature. Um, at home, my grandmother and I didn't get along very well because uh, she favored the females, my, my sister, my cousin, and I'm not saying she hated me because she didn't hate me. She just had favoritism towards the females and it was evident. So her and I clashed and she used to say things like, um, gun blaze in New Haven. Okay. She used to say things like pack your shit. And, you know, at, as uh, I was like 13, 14 at the time. So that wasn't, um, conducive to my growth and development, thinking that my grandmother don't care if I stay or leave. So it got to the point where I was just like, I'm ready to go. So I came back to the Bronx to stay with my father. He was on 169th and Washington. And my grandmother was on Laconia Avenue and I had cousins in Edenwall. So one of my cousins, he's my age, he was my age. So him and I were Titus, and I'd go over there and hang out with him. Uh-oh, got to answer the phone. Got to, matter of fact, I got to turn mine off for it. And so hanging out with him exposed me 
to what was the going ons in the projects, selling drugs, guns, and things of that nature. And I had only saw crack on TV, like on the news, they showed crack. So when I finally saw it in real life, at the time, Edenwall was transitioning from 20s to dimes. So I looked at it and I'm like, wow, people are paying $20 for this, $10 for this. And it seems so tiny. So in my head, I'm like, wow, you know, get a bunch of sneakers and some rings, a couple of chains. And uh -huh. I was thinking of that. Like I said, I'm 14. So I'm not thinking cars and houses. I'm thinking sneakers and chains and rings. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, well, listen, we could we could be the hit at the parties because we used to go to little house parties and, you know, yeah. and my clothes was. Oh man, my clothes was not it because coming from New Haven, <laughs> yo, bro, I feel you, bro. I feel you, bro. Listen, yo, listen, I'm gonna tell you some funny shit, bro. When I when I grew up, right, yo, I was always a tall, big kid, and my mom, when she bought me the Levi's, she couldn't afford the, the nice Levi's. Remember the colorful Levi's and shit with the straight legs? Yeah, yeah. Red, blue, yellow. <laughs> this was she bought me them shit. I'm like, I ain't wear these shits. I was like. I'm I might have to sell some crack, yo. I ain't wear that shit. Right I'll tell you, bro. Yo, they had a store. I don't know if it still exists, but it was called Conway's. One was on 34th Street. Uh, yeah, I remember. They yeah, have name brand stuff, but just like you said, the colors that they can't sell, they got to sell it for cheap. Yeah. You know what I mean? We get the Calvin Kleins and red and blue and all yeah. that. <laughs> Calvin Kleins. <laughs> so... We needed the money. Like, I needed to step my game up. So getting into the hustling game, it was like I'm still a nerd at heart because I was an honor student. I came back to New York, got into the honors class. Yeah. But I didn't know enough, so they had me looking out. So I'm looking out as I'm learning. So we're out there. It was four of us, me, my cousin, and two of my boys. Yeah. Um. I'm in a building looking out Eden Walls, wintertime. This is January, uh -huh. January 87, when I first started coming out the house, so to speak. And it was cold as hell. I had on um, uh, 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 my aunt, uh, and this is me keeping it real. Yeah. My, my aunt had a double goose that she gave me because they were yeah. unisex, you, you know, a yeah, male or female could wear it. She had a, a um, a sheepskin. She had the boy cut sheepskin. She gave that to me. Yeah. Um, so I got my coats. That My coats is in style, but I still need to get the rest of my clothes up the park. Yeah. So I'm chilling in a building because it's cold. And I don't know DTs. I don't know. I'm, I'm square to everything. Uh huh. So, but, I, but I'm clean. I don't have nothing on me. Yeah. A crackhead sold me a beeper, a pager. It didn't even have numbers on it. But I bought it because I wanted to look hip, have it on my hip, click it, beep, 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 let the girl see me. But it didn't work. I came out the building, police, the two of them, they grabbed me, pulled me in, searched me, found a beeper. It was like, yo, what's this? I was like, it's, it's a beeper. They said, what you got this for? I was like, it don't even work. I'm just for the look. So they pat me down. They let me go. From that moment, I it something clicked in my head like yo listen if I'm going to be out here risking this because if I had something on me I would have got arrested yeah I was like I have to make more money because what was happening was it's four of us we would get out there and we were selling dimes it was slow the times we was out there we wasn't out there no big rush time all of us went to school we came home from school and we'd be out there for like maybe three hours because we had curfews at home, we, you know. Home. So at the end of our little three, four hour, we end up maybe $20. It's four of us, we split it straight. So if we make $20, I got $5, everybody else got $5. And then we go to the pizza shop for our last few minutes, then we go home. Yeah. And I, I thought about that, I'm like, listen, I risk going to jail for $5? The girls see us out there, so it looks like we're getting money because yeah. the girls see us hustling. But the reality of it was, man, I could have made more money packing bags. Yeah, true. So I'm like, no. So 
my aunt knew some hustlers. The one that gave me the sheepskin? Yeah. She's only three years older than me, so. Okay. She, she, she knew some hustlers. She plugged me into one of her ex-boyfriends. Boom. He, he plugged me into somebody, but his price was too high. So my aunt had another uh, current boyfriend. She plugged me into him. He brought me downtown. Now, this is me keeping it 100% thorough. I was on welfare. And my grandmother, rest her soul, she was gracious enough to allow me to keep the cash benefits. You know how welfare give you yeah. little cash benefits. So she was like, listen, you keep that. You just put in something for food. Yeah. So I took my welfare money, went downtown, and got a package. <laughs> <laughs> Brought it up town. Now it's like, okay, now instead of us hustling for twenty dollars, now we all we are we all a family, we're a group. So we putting it together. Like I said, it's dimes. So yeah. it's not like I went down there and came back with a thousand bottles. No, I went down there and came back with like twenty or two hundred dollars, came back with like twenty bottles. I mean, excuse me, a hundred dollars, because it was five. You buy it for five down there, bring it and sell it for ten up here. So yeah. my hundred dollars gets me 20 bottles, which turns to 200. It was just a, a double up. Yeah, true on that. But it was putting me in a position to have more money than the $5. And it put us all into position where we all could have a little more money and get our little sneakers and all that. Boom. Um, that was the beginning. Now, fast forward. I get more into the game. I learn more. I get an actual connect because I worked for somebody. In between that, I worked for somebody who had a connect, got myself in a position, knew the yeah. connect, met the connect, was re-upping and everything. And then when I part ways, now I got the connect. So now I can get big A's, half a key, things of that yeah. nature. I was never pumping keys. I, my, I, I got people who was doing that, but me personally, I was never pumping that much, copying that much. So I ended up moving to, I'm, and I'm just talking about moving hustling wise, not moving my household. I ended up selling drugs on the south side. There's an area that's called Bum Square or Bum Hill, depending on who says it, but it's still the same area. It's four building, courtyard in the middle. Uh, my co-defendant lived up there and as i connected with him it allowed me to have a safe house a place to run a place to have a stash because prior to that i was actually sending work with guys that lived up there coming from home hitting them when they about to run out i either have to go home or i go home prior and tell them to call me when you're close to running out and then i'll come and that was too much back and forth. Like, uh, you know, I live like seven minutes away on foot, but still, you know, when when it's rush rush hour and stuff like that, that seven minutes can cost you some money. Yo, Force, hold yeah. on one second, Force. One more, one, more, one, more, one more chat. Let me pop your shit real quick, man. Hold up. All right. <laughs> Let's see if this goes good this time. He don't want to stand up. He don't want to stand up. BX stand up. Mount Vernon, stand up. Stand up. It's the end of days. The end of days, days, days. The end of days. What time is it? Hey, for you. Looking at my Gucci, it's about that time. Get the mighty fucking force to ignite a rhyme. I heard you was out there snitching on crimes. And when I catch you choking, is mine. Choke, no choke, jiggy choke, no choke. You went to Brooklyn, got your jiggy jaw broke. The homies called you up and asked you who they want to shoot. You said, nah, dog, and filed a lawsuit. Although I can't label you a snitch for doing that, you use a certified bitch and a rat. Rat ass bitch. Checking my bottle, it's about that time. 
Looking for my fucking force to ignite the rhyme. Right? I know you was out there snitching on crimes. And when I catch you choke, your ass is mine. Eden Wall PJ's 1989. You couldn't get no money selling nicks and dimes. And front up your building so you came to me. I put your monkey ass on to get some cheese. Cheese. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. What part of the motherfucking game allows Jesus to testify and keep a thorough name? You went to the grand jury and showed up at trial. Pointed me out in open court like snitching wasn't style. Use a fucking rat. Use a fucking rat. Rat. Use a rat because you testified. And if I squash a rodent ass, that'd be pesticide. You fucking rat. rat. Make sure you subscribe to my boy Johnny Button Jr. AKA Check your mama bottle, it's about that time. For my fucking force to ignite the rhyme. I know you was out there snitching on crimes. And when I catch you choke, your ass is mine. I checked with the experts to find your network and found out you're worth less than fucking wet dirt. It says that you're worth less than 25K. I know 25 ways to make 25K. I'll probably make your net worth in 25 days. Hey. Hey. I drive a G L five five zero. I once was your hero. I rock mean coats, cashmere, and stepping killer bees. So why would I ask you for shit, nigga? Please. Oh gosh. In the days, you said cherry. Lemon, water, melon. You celebrate every time they caught a felon. Strawberry, apple, lemon, apricot. After this, choke no joke, you're a livestock. Fucking snitch, rat, bitch. It's over. It's checkmate. I love this part. Y'all thinking because he killed a nigga that he's a real nigga. And I told on a real nigga. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. Hey, he didn't tell nobody, y'all. He didn't tell nobody. Finish that story, bro. I'm bad. Um, so we was, I was getting money on, on the area called Bump Square. Yeah. We was doing the regular stuff. And in those days, the regular stuff is selling drugs, beating crackheads down, messing with the girls, you know, standing around the stoop, laughing, joking, yeah. stuff like that. That's a hood. That's a hood, bro. Right. Every hood. So... Uh, here comes Artie. He comes. He's from 32. 32. 11. 32 is was. Was his name of, Ar Arthur Flegerheimer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, he, he's from 11. 32. That was one of the the power buildings in the project. Yeah. There, there was like five main drug areas in the projects. Yeah. And where. The Bum Square was one. 1132, that's where he lived, was another. Yeah. 1141, 1135, and 1159. Those were like the five main areas. There's other areas that sold drugs, but if if you're looking to make over $1,000 a day, you got to be in those five areas. Yeah, sure. Any, anywhere else, you were subjected to, you know, get your little couple of hundred or whatever, but... Boom. Oh. The north side is 1141, 1135, 1159. The south side is 1132, Bum Square, and 1138 was, but they fell off. But at any rate, if you want to say six buildings, you add 1138. Any rate, um, Artie lived at 1132. I don't Choke know no what joke. happened. Choke no joke. Choke. Artie's from like Yeah. So he comes, he's cool with my co-defendant. I knew who he was, 
but I didn't know him. Like he wasn't my boy. When I come by 1132, I didn't shout him out, nothing. He was a nobody. He come through, he talked to my co-defendant and he was trying to get some work. So my co-defendant tells me, I was like, all right, fronted him, fronted him a half ounce. Now I had got an interview before and I said I fronted him a half and someone may have interpreted it that I in front of him a half a key. Yeah. No, in front of him a half an ounce. A half an ounce, for those who don't know, is 14 grams. 14 grams can just get you a few hundred dollars. It wasn't, you know, you wasn't buying a car with 14 grams. You, nah. you could buy a pair of sneakers with 14 grams. Buy you an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> a Levi's suit. <laughs> but at any rate, I didn't know him like that. That was a helping hand, give you something, get you a start. So I was like, you can also sell it right here where we're at so that I can make sure you pay me back. But, you know, and you're cool with my co-defendant. And he was a funny dude. Yeah. So he's he hasn't changed much. He'll come around, laugh and joke and talk about gossip, tell you stuff that no one knows. So some of it is true, some of it is not, but it's still entertaining. Yeah, true. Um, so he come back and forth. Now I had a Honda Accord at the time. It wasn't a Benz, a Beamer, but very limited amount of people had cars, Honda especially Accord seventeen years old. Honda right. back in the day. So I had a oh. Honda Accord. He had a license. I. I had a permit, then I got a license, um, but nobody else, none of the rest of my boys, none of us had a license. So it was just me, and then Choke came along, he had a license. So just us two had licenses. So when he wanted to drive, it was easier. If I'm not around, you can drive because if it get pulled over, we not getting in no trouble because a licensed driver, boom. So that's all good. Now, one day I was getting money. Choke was not here when this happened. A brother was coming around, copping crack. And he was telling prison war story. Yo, I just came home from jail, this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. Now, at the time, I had only been to Spofford. So I hadn't had that prison experience and all this. So that seemed enticing. You hearing that guy, yo. Yeah, I'm just coming. And he had the, the swag and boom. He's still buying crack, but he had the uh, jailhouse girl swag. So he's coming back and forth, talking. He introduced himself, talking to him. And I'm like, okay, boom. He coming back and forth. So we, we talking, building. He's still talking that jail talk. Now, in this particular time, like the fourth or fifth time he came, I was getting ready to break out. I had somewhere to go. So I'm like, yo, I'm going to serve him because I wanted to hear some more of that talk. Now, he came with another brother that I knew. Me and him didn't have some stuff in the past, but we squashed it. But I, but I knew him. So we go into the building. At the time, there was a little crevice, a separation in the door because we had the metal doors in the projects and it had a gap in the door. We would put the package in the gap. So that if the police come and we jet, they chase us or whatever, pat us down, we don't have it. No product on us. So I go in there. I let them in the building. There's two of them. I turn my back. I reach up into the crack, and then, bam, I get hit. Boom. Hit me in the eye. I drop the package. First thing in my head, get the package. Forget the punch. Get the package. I pick up the package. Boom. I get hit in the eye again. Bam. Dude grabbed me in a headlock. We back up out the door because nobody, my boys outside don't know nothing going on in there. We back up outside. Now the action takes place. Now they see what this dude hit me in the same eye the third time. So it went from pain to start to get numb. And now I'm just straight mad. Yeah. I picked this dude up, the, the jailhouse bragging dude, yeah. slam him, a knife pops out of somewhere, pocket somewhere. I grab it, put him up against the fence. I hit him with the knife. The knife bent. It, it, 
it, it was like a funhouse knife. It didn't stab him or nothing. It just it just bent. Um, my boys jumped in. We we all fighting and stuff. Money because they was grabbing my pockets, trying to get in my pockets when um we was when we backed out the door. So there's money all over the place, and so they start running. The the the, the jailhouse dude go gets his car. He drives us on the sidewalk. Tries to hit me. It, it's like a whole melee. Yeah. Then they scatter. We leave. Yo, my eye was like it was this eye, my right eye. Yo, that was the first time. I, I'm dark skinned, but I had a black eye. Like it, it, you could yeah. tell, <laughs> I was different from my skin complexion. Yeah, a man. lot darker, and it was swollen. So I went and got a um. My co-defendant lived right there, so he had a pair of shades. So I put the donkeys on, but you could still see from the side. That's it puffed out to the side too. So, and I'm telling you this because this is what happened, but part of me explaining, I'm drop, dropping jewels too. Yeah. Because that's part of like, listen, you, you want to hear my story, that's fine, but I'm not promoting violence, but I want people to, to who are looking and listening to learn some things as well. Mm-hmm. When I came downstairs, when I came back downstairs with the donkeys, my uncle was outside, uh, rest in peace, my uncle Panama. Rest and when I peace. seen him, now he heard that something happened. So he was like, yo, what happened? And I was like, yo, tell Cat when I catch him, I'm gonna murder him. That's what I said. I told him to relay that message to this dude. Yeah. Now I'm saying that because words have power. Yeah. You say certain things, you, you put it out there, and they take on a life of their own. Facts. Um, I went up to the pizza shop, was standing around. Somebody told me they saw the car. It was a Maxima. I couldn't see. I had the doggies on, but it was. I ran up the block. I went and got a real knife. Ran up the block. Saw this dude. He was at the light talking to somebody. I hit him in the chest. Boom. He, 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 he murks off. He crashes somewhere. He, he gets locked up. I never see. Matter of fact, I seen him one time after that, in 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 jail, in the bullpens. But he was an adult. I was an adolescent. That's I, I never seen him no more. From that day, I stabbed him, to the time in the bullpens, and never seen him since. Boom. But any rate, um, I come back. I I don't see the deceased for over a month. Now, I, it wasn't like I was out there hunting for him because I wasn't. I was, you know, going about my life, my daily business, you know, making money, doing my thing. And then one night I, okay, one night I, um, we was hustling. They wanted to hang out. They wanted to go down to 8th Avenue. I wanted to go to bed. So I was like, yo, listen, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. So Choke was like, yo, listen, now we with girls. So Choke put me on the spot. He like, yo, listen, I pay for a motel. Boom. So now he said in the front of her. So she like, what's up? So I was like, all right. Boom. So we went to the motel. Choke took the car and jet it. They were supposed to come back and get me at a certain time. Yeah. They ain't come back. So I went to Eden Wall. Met up with them back in Eden Wall, but now it's like morning, morning, like daylight. It's like six, it's six in the morning. So I see another brother that I know, and he like, yo, this dude is over here. All right. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, cool. So we run down on him. Yeah. I run down on the dude. I had a knife. I hit him up. My co-defendant had a bat. My, my ankle was messed up, so... My co-defendant chased him down first and caught up with him, hit him with the bat. I caught up with him. Choke was in the car. Choke didn't get out the car. So this is, I have to explain this part so that anybody listening can visualize it. We get out the car in the middle of the block. We chase this dude down. The dude runs around a corner. My co-defendant runs around a corner with a bat and hits him. I get there last because I have an ankle issue, so I'm running slow. Yeah. We're out of sight. Anybody, the choke is in the car and the girl is in the car. You can't see 
around a, a three-story building. Nah, yeah, facts. So we go around the corner, we take place, we fighting. I got the knife in my hand, I'm stabbing him, punching him, we're fighting. Choke takes the car, passes the building, goes halfway down the block. Now, although it's a field, you have a bunch of parked cars and stuff in the way. So unless you get out of the car, you still can't see what's going on half a block behind you. Facts. So I'm just I'm just pointing that because bro, not only you. tell everything, bro. Tell right. the whole shit, bro. So we we do this. We run down the block because we saw the car as it was passing. So we knew it moved. So we finished hitting them up. The the brother said he caught my arm one of the times when I was swinging. Yeah. And this this is the death grip. Cause it was like for for one second, it's like he had me stopped, and he was like, "Yo, four, yeah, stop." Yeah, yeah. I'm not. You was young, so the other guy was older than you. He was, so. he was 29. I was 17. He was 29. Yeah, yeah so, so yeah. Well, he was stronger. He, than you. he was clearly stronger than me. Yeah, facts. And to, and to some degree. Yeah, so and yeah, facts. He was like, "Yo, four, stop. I'm dead already." So at this time, I'm just, I'm just thinking about hurting him. When I got out of the car to chase him, it was to teach him a lesson. Yeah, sure. It wasn't about, listen, I'm going to go out. I'm, when I got out of the car, I wasn't thinking, I'm going to murder you. Even yeah, though right. I said it to my uncle, I was mad at that time. Yeah. But getting out of the car yeah, now. Because you know, I said that shit before, too. Like, where is about when a nigga, when a nigga crossed me? I'm like, yo, the nigga crossed me. I'm going to kill this nigga. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm going to kill a nigga. I'm just mad. And I'm in my emotions. I'm young. Exactly. And I feel you. Yeah, go ahead. So when he said that, I was like, yo, you ain't dead yet. So I hit him again. I still, even at that moment when he said that, I didn't think he was that badly injured. But I was so into the moment, I didn't really look at him to see the damage. Yeah. It was like, boom, 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 boom. Because, you know, everything fighting, everything happens so fast. Even in a boxing match, a three-minute round, there's a lot of punches thrown, but it's still only three minutes. Facts. So, um, this was, this could have been like three minutes. And then we jet. Now, I'm going to the police reports and stuff because I did not see this. His intestines came out. So, he was really hurt. Yeah. Um, we jet. Uh, one of the, one of the neighborhood crackheads that know him went to his family's house and told them that, yo, he's hurt bad around the corner, blah, blah, blah. So when the police did their canvas, when they went knocking on doors, uh -huh. they also went to the, the deceased parent's house. So when they talked to them, they said, well, Pat came and told us what's going on so maybe she saw what happened so they went that to was pat that was a chick that was in the car uh-uh pat was a crackhead from the neighborhood that was a witness okay so they went to pat's house pat knew me by name so she was like well it was forced she knew me by name yeah and 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 she it was only two of us doing the work yeah. the other two people in the car was just in the car yeah so pat identified me by name um and said it was another guy the people because there were some people in the their windows when all the noise was going on some people looked out their windows so there was a couple of witnesses that looked out the window said they seen two guys fighting another dude this all this is important so the police force tracked down force to me, even though the crackhead picked out a picture of somebody else. They, you know, they have certain police that be, that's what they do. They, they nicknames, they know who's who. They know nicknames and faces. So when they hear a nickname, they go to such as, yo, who's this? And then they got their little snitches and all that to help them, whatever the case may be. But they know nicknames and they know who they are. So now I'm in custody. I, when I get to Rikers Island, 
I call the block. Back then, we used to be able to call the corners. Yeah, you have the phone phone. number. Right. We call the pay phones. Mm -hmm. So I call the corners looking for them, and I'm like, yo, listen, tell them to bring my car home. Now, at the time, I know law now. I didn't know no law then. Yeah. But just common sense is like if the crime happened and it's a murder and I did arrive and leave in my car, put the car away. They didn't do that. They want to ride around, joy ride, so on and so forth. Now, the car gets pulled over. I got locked up the first. The car got pulled over on like the six, I believe. I don't remember the date that I called, but you know, you, you're in the bullpens for a couple of days. Yeah. So, I, you know, I probably called at like the third or something when I finally got to use the phone. Um, they get pulled over because, uh, um, matter of fact, let me back up a little bit. When I was, the day I got arrested, um, later on that day, um, no, the, let me catch myself. The, the crime happened six in the morning. I separated from them from then. Yeah. So I was gone. I left. They had the car. I went somewhere else. My co-defendant sometime during that day catches a ticket for doing a U-turn. Mm. He, he gets a ticket. They don't arrest him or nothing. They give him a ticket and send him on his way. But when they had pulled him over and asked for license and registration, he pulled out my registration because it's my car. Yeah, sure. So they like, this is not because he shows his ID. He shows he doesn't have a license. He shows his ID and my registration. He get a ticket for not having a license and a U-turn and all that. But they remember my name, He's, but he tells them I'm home sleep. So he gets his ticket. They send him on his way. Later on, after I'm arrested, you know how the police talk about the going-ons of the day and things of that nature. So they said, well, Johnny Bunting got arrested for murder. And one of them like, Johnny Bunting? I stopped the car belonging to Johnny Bunting earlier today. It's like, well, listen, when you see that car again, pull it over because it may have evidence in it mainly the knife and the, the, the bat. So a few days later, they see the car, they pull it over. And, and, and according to them, when, they, when he made the U-turn, he claims he saw a bat in the back, didn't think nothing of it, you know, because, you know, a bat is not a weapon. Yeah. It, it can be used as a weapon, but it's not a weapon. Facts. So they was like, well, definitely pull that car over because it may have some evidence in it. So the, the few days later, when he gets pulled over, um, my co-defendant says, four stabbed him, I hit him with a bat. So he makes that excited utterance. Right. Before, Pre-Miranda, he says that. So they, they bring him into the precinct and Mr. Choke, because he's sitting in the passenger seat. Boom. They bring him in there and... That's where the question commences. I don't know how. Now, I have often, and I'm going to do this here too, because as a youth, this is still a teaching moment. The yes. police will play games with you to get you to say stuff, to get you to admit stuff. Yes. So the police, and I was taught this when I got into the hustling game. The police would tell you somebody told on you or somebody did this, or somebody did this, to get you to respond. Now, I do not know what the police actually said to him. I'm just saying this as a prelude, that it is possible that they said, well, Johnny told us you were there, blah, 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 and, and get him all nervous. It's possible. Yeah, no, it's possible. They do that shit, bro. They do that shit. Right. Yeah. So um, he gave a statement uh, detailing what happened. Uh, 
saying I chased the guy around the block. I carried a, a, a knife, came back with blood on my shirt. My nose was bleeding and all this extra stuff. My nose in, in real on in real life, my nose wasn't bleeding. But now he puts all this together and I don't know about this as far as in my paperwork. I don't get yeah. it. Yeah, fact. Now, prior, prior to any paperwork happening, me calling the block and calling Shorty and all that, the girl that was with us told me that my co-defendant got arrested and that Artie came around saying, Choke no joke. Artie is choke no joke, guy. Choke came around saying, fuck them. Boom. I ain't getting locked up for them. Blah, blah, blah. So she told me he was telling. I didn't believe her. I was like, no, no, no. Boom. She was like, well, that's what he said. He said, F y'all. Boom, boom, boom. So when I started getting paperwork, I didn't get that paperwork of his until over a year later when it was time for trial. So prior to that, I had no proof of him telling and I wouldn't believe her. So when it came down to trial and they start doing the witness list, that's when it was like, Arthur Austin, now, although he's from around the way, I didn't go, I, we went to the same school, but he's older than me. We wasn't in the same grade or same class or none of that. So I didn't know his full name. I just, Artie. So when we going through the witness list, and I see Arthur Alston. I'm like, is this him? So I send word. I catch up with him. He's claiming that the DA was putting pressure on him to come testify and saying if he don't testify, he's going to charge him with perjury. And I'm like, listen, perjury ain't nothing. You get a fine. I'll pay the fine. That ain't nothing. Don't testify. He was like, no. He's... Now, I didn't know this, but he was in the DA's office regularly. I didn't know this. I'm just thinking that they had one little conversation. Cross up. Hey, yo, bro, that's my boy. Cross, that's my boy, Cross Charter. Yeah, cross the line. Salute. Saying. Salute. Peace, brother. Salute. Right here, man. Salute, King. Yeah. Salute, Kings. Yeah, salute to the me. panel. Salute to the yeah. chat, man. I'm just listening, chiming in. Listen to y'all break it down and stuff about, you know, the whole choke, no joke. So, you know, I'm, I'm just more of a observing a spectator to it. So I, I ain't mean to cut you off while you was in mid-stride, so. Yo, 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 All right. of course. It's my little part. This is my brother. Yes. My brother. He's good people, bro. All right, good. All right. Can I continue? Huh? Can you I continue? Got, he, yeah, continue, bro. All right. So, um, what was I saying? Um. Oh, the the um, I didn't see paperwork till trial. Like, matter of fact, the actual paperwork I didn't see till after trial. But I didn't know about him actually being a witness until they started putting together the witness list. Yeah. When I spoke to him and he was saying that they're putting pressure on him and all this, at this time, I'm taking his word as being true. Like, oh, they putting pressure on them. Boom, 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 boom. All right. So I'm like, this is what we'll do. You come to court. And I told him what to say. I, I said, say that you, me, and my co-defendant, and a female, the night before we was together, you dropped me off at the hotel, the motel, me and a girl. You broke out. You didn't see me since. You went on your way, you went home, boom, and you left my co-defendant with the car. You ain't see nobody no more. I was trying to get him to take his whole self out of the equation. Because yeah. if he say he has the car and they saw the car at the scene, that puts him with the car. Yeah, facts. So I had him separate me. You ain't seen me from the night before. And then at, when y'all went and hung out downtown, when y'all came, you got you went home. You ain't seen nobody since. Next thing you know, I'm locked up. Y'all driving around the car. You get pulled over. Police forcing you to say that you saw this or you're getting locked up. So he said, yeah. 
So I'm thinking, go to trial. He's going to come. He's going to say these things. And I'm good because the yeah. witness, the other, there was four witnesses. Two of them didn't know who did what. They just were saying what they saw. They couldn't identify they nobody. They couldn't put a name or you, they didn't pick nobody out, no lineup or nothing. Pat identified me out of a lineup, but she also identified somebody else out of a photo array and she picked the photo array first. So with her conflicting identification, it would have been a reasonable doubt. So if he would have came and said, listen, I seen him the night before. I didn't see him since. And the stuff that they made me say is a lie. Boom. And I told him if they try to charge you with perjury, I'm going to pay the fine. You're not going to do no time. So I come to court. Mm -hmm. uh, um, my cop out was 10 to 20. And then before trial, it was 7 to 21. So 7 to 21 was my final cop out. I'm like, I'm good. He's, he's not coming to court to say this. He's going to say that. He comes to court. Boom. He chased him around the corner. He's saying all this. He was in the car. He put himself in the car. So I was like, things is it's not good. Yeah, fact. Chased him around the corner. Boom. He had a pouch in his hand. He didn't say it was a knife, but he puts a pouch in his hand. Put a pouch in my hand. Chase him around the corner, come back, blood on my shirt, nose bleeding. So you put me at the scene, you put me chasing the deceased, you put me coming back with blood on my shirt. It's evidently, uh, I caught him. I chased him around the corner, come back with blood. He's dead around the corner. I caught him. Yeah. Boom. So was he, so, and I hate to cut you off, Johnny, was he a star, was he the star witness of the case? Pat? was the star because she was the one from the beginning, but right. he was the corroborator mm. because, because of Pat's conflicting identification. Right. That made him the, the, the co-star because what made the, the liaison to the, to the, to the whole thing. Right. Because what he did is that he put me at the scene so that her mix-up could just be viewed as a mix-up because the person she picked out, the photo, and myself, if you look at both of us, we resemble. Right. So the average person can make that mistake. Right. Now, with him, in his testimony, he's like, yo, I know him for years. I went to school with him. So if you know me for years and you went to school with me, you know who I am. So that bolstered the identification and said, well, listen, that's good. That's good money. Mm. So that's what his position was in the, in the trial. Right. He didn't say he saw me stab him or do nothing, but you, you, you consolidated that it was me. So now the stuff that she says, all right, well, it was him. It wasn't the other guy. So why, so why, so, you know, like, like Jigga said, so why he was on the stand, he said, stand up nigga, now he point down the stand, you know what I'm saying? So my thing was that he had to pick you out when they, the judge, um, when the lawyer, you know, the lawyer said, hey, do you see this man in the court that did this crime? See, 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 here's the thing. This is how they do it. They said, uh, you, you was in the car. Who was in the car? Well, it was me, Johnny, uh, Dennis, such and such. Do you see Johnny in the courtroom? Mm. Boom. So they have him point me out just as being there, not as doing the crime. So basically, you was just, he was put in a position to, to basically just point a finger. You just guilty by association. No, by, by putting me square at the scene you make her testimony solid facts got you i got you so it's like yo i know him he was there but by where bam so it and to the untrained mind 
since you're not saying he killed him, you're not looking at it like, yo, I didn't point you out as the right. person killing him. I just point you out as you was with me in the car. What? Right. At the right. scene of the crime. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's so, crazy. So, so here's the thing. These, you know, we're kids. These are professionals. And they're trained at doing this. And they're trained at painting pictures. So for the jury. So if they say, well, listen, I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you this. All of it seems innocent. But it's building the case. So you so the, so the lawyer that you had, the, I mean, I guess my whole thing. What was what was your what was the defense from your angle? What what was the whole perception of defense of your angle? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, mean, I know I know one you wasn't there, but I'm just saying like they did they ask you like you, you go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. See, the reasonable doubt was based on. The identification, the conflict in identification of the crackhead. She picked out the picture of somebody else first. Right. So it's like from from a, a point of view that we're trying to spin to the jury's head, if she picked out this picture first, how the hell did they get me? Right. You picked out a picture of this guy, and now you got me in the lineup to get picked out. How did I get in the lineup? How come this guy wasn't in the lineup? Now, we didn't say those words that way. I'm just painting the picture to you like that. So it's like, yeah, right, like right. You, you, you pick this photo first, and then you pick this guy out of a lineup. How? How did it get there? So that's the identification thing. Mm. So it it, it would have possibly worked. Had choke didn't put the icing on the cake. Somebody just said it. If he didn't put the icing on the cake, it would have been left as okay. She picked out this guy, and she picked him out in a lineup. Right? How, how did? How come this guy in a picture never got in the lineup? She might have picked right. him. Out. Right. So that would have been the reasonable doubt. But if you have somebody who claims they know me for years, and they said, "Yo, listen." I was with him when we arrived on the scene with him. He chased the de deceased around the corner, came back with blood on him, open and shut. Right. So basically, how long did it take after, you know, um, so after your trial, how long did, well, during the trial, when it was time for them to deliberate, how long did it take for them to come back from the deliberation based off all these things that were said, like, so it was a quick, it was uh Okay, a quick. The judge said, "Okay, they ready to go back, or was it a long, long, drawn out?" It was. It was hours. It wasn't days. I didn't go home. That the jury didn't get sequestered. Right. No, no, no. It wasn't that. They got some testimony read back because they was unsure about some stuff. Right. And right. Came back guilty. Uh, um, I I was charged. I, I don't know how much y'all know about law, but for the sake of listeners and viewers, I'm going to right. explain. Some things. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, Mingi T, the real Mingi T. Yo, I seen the paperwork already. He had it on a Queen's flip. He don't got to show the paperwork now. I already seen right. it. Right, right. Nah, yeah, nah. The paperwork that's all over the place. That's that been shown years ago. While, and while we at it too, chat, hit that like button, share the content, get it out there. You know what I'm saying? Please, I mean, get this content out here. You know what I'm saying? For our listeners, hit that like button. Leave a comment. Whether you want to, whether you agree or not, at least leave a comment to give us some feedback. You know what I'm saying? And, and you can continue. So he said it wasn't, it was some hours. When, when, when a person is charged with a crime and they go before the grand jury, the, the, the charges get put before the grand jury, they put multiple charges. Mm. You can always put one charge. Right. So, oh, hold on. Yo, yo, Traff, hold on. Yo, 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 ten toes. I sent you the link to your D, to your to your to your parts up. To your to your um text message, bro. Shaft, you know you, you know what I'm saying I see a picture of Shaft. He was locked up with you. Ten toes down. Yeah. Yeah. I sent. I, I, Shaft, I just sent you the um link, yo. Shaft, yo, Shaft got a big platform like me. He got a bigger platform than me, bro. All right, yeah. that's that's a great thing. Yeah, the brothers is doing it. 
Yeah, that's, that's my bro, yo. Matter of fact. So, when, when I um went to trial, I got charged with two counts of murder. One was intentional. And intentional is basically meaning that with the intent to cause the death of such and such, you caused the death of him. Correct. The second charge was called depraved indifference. Um, basically, depraved indifference is if you participate in some conduct that could cause the death of someone and you know it could cause the death of someone and you mm -hmm. disregard that and still do it, then you're held to a murder-like uh, statute uh, because what you did ended up causing the death. Right. Now, um, those are two murder charges, intentional and depraved indifference. Now, okay. that, was, that was my indictment. Now, when I went to trial and they submitted to the jury, they added another charge. Cool. Hmm. So they added the intentional murder. You intend to cause the death, you cause the death. The prayed indifference with that wonton. They got these funny words, but I, I said it more basic. That Because here's a, a way for me to describe it to, to everyday mind so they can understand. If we're at the zoo and I unlock the cage to a lion. I know if that lion comes out, there's a chance he's going to kill somebody. But if right. I open it and he comes out and kills somebody, then I am responsible for that person's death and it's raised to the level of murder. Okay. So I got those two charges. Now, because of the fact that it was a stabbing it was a fight, you know, and the guy, the deceased, had a record. So it was like, well, listen, well, it, it they was fighting. It might have been, and some of the stuff that the uh, witnesses were saying that they said that he tried to rob him. So all this stuff was brought into the trial. So it was like, well, if he really did try to rob him, then we got to throw a manslaughter in there. Right now, manslaughter is a lesser crime than murder the penalty is much lesser and the criteria is with the intent to hurt someone you end up causing their death so you don't it takes the level of intent away of killing them but it's like a mistake so i get these three charges submitted to the jury so that's why when you said was it quick they came out and they asked for the, a rereading of the definition of these things because they, exactly. okay, well, he didn't intend to kill him, but what he did it, it, it the, the identification was not on the table. It was just like, okay, he did it. Now let's just see how culpable he is, how much, how much responsibility he has to put on his shoulders. Right. So, they ended up finding me guilty of the depraved indifference, which is still a, a one felony. So the jury don't know what it is. They just picking things out of a hat. Uh, I get sentenced to 20 to life and go up north. Now I run into his papa. Like like I said, one of the, one of my peoples is, is his papa. They lived in the same building came up together mom dukes you know how some people are tight right, right, right. spend the night stuff like that boom so i run into him and i tell him yo listen this you know he didn't believe it i bring out the transcripts i had the transcripts and everything i bring out all this stuff showed him boom here it is here's his test right. I, had, I had my transcripts here's his testimony i got the actual the statements and all that after trial Boom. This is what he said, but boom, boom, boom. So he calls him. He gets him on the phone. He talks to me. I'm like, yo, listen, I'm talking to the jailhouse lawyers. They're saying, well, listen, if he recants his statement, you may be able to go home. So I'm like, all right. So my cousin, that's that's my age. 
I, I holla at him. He was, you know, doing this thing out in Edewall. His name was Big. So I'm like, yo, go go holla at him. So mm-hmm. he said he was going to holla at him, but I ended up calling him on a three-way. So I got my cousin on the phone, and I have him call Artie, uh, Choke. So right. I'm talking to Choke like, yo, you did that? Because he had said he was going to do it. He was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. He started <clears throat> talking like, I'm busy. I'm gonna take care of it. Blah, blah, blah. And so my cousin chimed in. Was like, "Yo, go take care of that today." And he's like, "Yo, who this?" And he told him who it was. He was like, "Yo, I'm gonna do it." So he did it. He made a, a statement recanting, saying why the you know, police pressured him, did this, that, and the third, boom, and then try to say, go back to the original game plan. I ain't seen him from the day before. I don't remember the um. The, the whole statement, but he basically tried to clean it up. So he tried to recant what he had already confessed. Right. The course wasn't trying. I put in a motion, call a 440 motion. The course wasn't trying to hear that. Boom. So uh, throughout the years, I, because a part of me, uh, a part of me was forgiven because I, I was looking at it like, Yo, I tried to help you out. So I can understand you were scared or whatever. And you did help get me out of this thing. It's not a big deal. Let me see. Stop on now. Go on now. Stop out with the little thing. Now time passes and I'm hearing he's doing big things. Um, 106 in Park and Rap City. and No, Rap City. I heard he was doing Rap City and all this. So I'm like, well, damn, you may be able to help a brother out um, because you messed up. Maybe you can help it out. Help mm-hmm. me make some, you know, do some things. So I had some books. Go to school and do the work. Huh? Go ahead, bro. So I had some books going on. I'm like, yo, listen, I'm, I'm trying to make some moves with this. I'm not asking you to give me no money. Just give me some promotion. Help me to help, me to help myself. Yeah. So he was saying, all right, cool. Uh, he said he was going to contact somebody and send him a book, and then he'll do whatever. He ain't do it. So one time I was on a three-way to him, and you know how at the end of the call, the, the third party hang up, and you can stay on the phone with the person that called. Yeah. So the female that called him, he didn't hang up. So she didn't know who she was calling, so she heard the conversation. So after he hung, after we thought he hung up, she was like, "Yo, why you got me calling some rat?" I'm like, "Yo, listen, uh, chill. He's supposed to take care of some stuff for me." Boom, boom, boom. But he hears that he didn't hang up, so he hears this. So he's offended. Like, oh, this dude got this girl calling me a rat. Blah, 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 blah. So I ain't doing nothing for him. So, you know, fast forward, when I come home, I came home in 2015. Yeah. And my my boy, his papa was home already. Yeah. And I called him. I'm talking about I was home for days. I wasn't even home a week yet. Mm. Uh, I get in touch with my boy. Uh, he calls choke. So we're us three are on the phone on a three way. So I'm like, yo, I'm home. Like, what's up? What's he like, yo, you called me a rat. I said, that's what you did, man. Like, boom. Now my brother's trying to make peace because I acknowledge that you can't carry around hate. Yeah. It, it, right. it, it'll eat you. It'll eat you alive. So I didn't. I wanted closure. Would it? And I, honestly, all I really wanted at the time was an apology, a, a, a sincere apology, and admitting that you messed up. But yo, but, but, got it, but got it. hold on one second. Yo, ten toes. Yo, yo, ten toes. Want to ask you a question? Ten toes. I'm listening. Say that again. You want, you want to ask Johnny a question, right? Yeah, what's up? What's up there, false man? What's up, bro? 
You don't need you. You know who the fuck I am, man. No, nah, and I can't even see your face, man. You act like you're wanted by the police. <laughs> Come on, man. Ain't no one here, bro. <laughs> you don't know who it is, bro. You know how long it's been, man. The the, the force. I sent yeah. you a picture of me him. Yeah, I said he looked familiar, but I can't. And Force, it, it, hold on, hold on, hold on, Force. Let me explain something to you, man. Don't make me find you and rush you to the concrete. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jeff, Batman, Rab, uh, Auburn. Auburn. It's Auburn. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, it's Jeff, Nick. This is oh, Jeff. Shit. What's up, boy? What's <laughs> happening, <with you>, man? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're doing, you, you doing your thing, huh? Yeah, you know, I'm trying. I'm That's trying, good. brother. Ain't no, ain't no trying, man. Ain't no trying. When you try, you fail. You're doing it. Oh, this you is not be doing it to the degree that you want, but you're doing it. So, so do you think, in all honesty, it put you in a position? Okay, because we know this is different between street niggas and square niggas. Do you think? By telling it, by you being a street nigga, telling a square nigga how to be a street nigga, it kind of backfired. Nah, because he was he was in the street. He might have been in the street before me. He's he's two years older than me. Excuse me. But but it's a difference between being in the streets and being, you know what I'm saying, in the street. Like that's what I'm saying. Like you shouldn't have see what I'm saying is the way you explain it. You said you had to basically try to coach him to give a statement for you. Now, any street name, you wouldn't have to coach them. And so you're right. So that's what I'm saying. So when you're looking at hindsight, it's like me and me and King up here. If we go out and some shit pop off, he don't got to say, but look, I need you to say this. Right. One is nigga, we ain't got shit to do with it. I don't know what they talking about. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like unusual suspects. We the gimp. We Kaz and Soze. We the gimp. We stupid. We don't know no better. <laughs> so, you feel me? Yeah, we the gimp. Yeah. So, yeah, man, yeah, everybody so, laughs so, at the so, gimp. So, so, my thing is... Thing, right. So, my thing is, like, in your situation, by you really being a stand-up street nigga, what happened was when, when you tried to coach him, it wasn't in him from the get-go. Right, so right. when you say you want it now, when you look at it from a logical point of view, you saying, hey, man, I would like, if anything, sincere apology. But you got also got to consider how can somebody apologize for not being street? I, I get it. I'm just saying I, I, I'm I looking it. at it. Yeah, and, and I get what you saying and, and what you did and what you had to go through. And that you was facing 20 years of life. But I'm just saying at the end of the day, I'm like, I mean, you. You ask a dude that is no 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 disrespect, and I ain't saying he ain't no known for taking that pictures. Nigga, yo, that nigga he known for taking shit. pictures and taking snapshots and Polaroids, and he was getting punked on the video. So I just can't see how much street that can be. And and you're right, but you're you're saying this because of the stuff that happened after. Correct, yeah. but I'm just saying it's like anything else. So you telling me you didn't by you fucking with him, you didn't see no flaw in him I, before. No, listen, let, let me back up to something that you probably didn't hear. Okay, I knew who he was, but I didn't deal with him. I got he, you. He got into my cipher because he was cool with my co defendant. Got you, and he was a clown. So you know, in, in the hood. When you're standing outside in the cold or the heat or whatever, everybody needs right. that clown to, to to liven up the the Borman times. Right. So that was cool. And like I said, he's older than me, so it's not like he was in my class or, you know, I didn't know him like that. So right. And as an adult now with a lot of adult experience, I looked at it like, yo, listen, maybe. As a youth, he wasn't the brightest. He wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. And you got these professionals that probably was thinking circles around him. And I did the time. So right. like, I can't stay bitter with it. So I'm like, I need to give him an out so that I can stop hating him and stop being bitter and go on with my life. 
Right. So I just wanted, like, yo, man, I messed up, man. They, they, he, he could have told me whatever because it's not like I was there. I wasn't there with the police listening. So he could have been like, yo, they said you told. I got mad. I did this, whatever. You know, right. he could have said any of that. But he, he never brought none of that stuff up until I put him on blast. Then it's like, oh, you told him? No. If the police told you that, you should have been said that. When I asked you, we would have never even got to all this. I can prove what, you know, what, what happened with me. I can prove how everything happened and got him. He was not on nobody's suspect list. Right. So nobody could tell on you. You're not on the suspect list. You were in the car that was being looked for, and that was spillover. You shouldn't shouldn't have been in the car. Right. He, he didn't just say, "Yo, bro, I messed up." Blah blah blah. I wasn't asking him for money or none of that. If he would have blessed me with something, that would have just been extra. All I wanted was an apology, a sincere apology, and that was it. And the right. other thing is. On the phone when we was talking, that's basically what I was saying. Like, yo, listen, man, just own up. Yo, I didn't tell on you. I was like, well, listen, you just messed up. I ain't snitch. I ain't no snitch. I'm like, yo, listen, man, you came, you testified, man. Right. I mean, yeah. I man, mean, you like, told. You called me a snitch. You called me a snitch, bro. You you testified, man. Like, yeah. If he what? if he puts if he puts you in the scene in the scene of the vicinity of the crime, I mean. Hell, I mean, it don't take much, but I just, it's, again, it was so crazy is the fact that, I mean, even back then that you couldn't play off like, man, I don't know this motherfucker. I know of him, but I don't know him to to put us that close together to say just because he, shit, everybody knew you in the hood. So that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what's so fucked up that they just used the more of a general you know, put a general target. Hell, I mean, if I lived in the neighborhood, oh yeah, you know him? Yeah, I know him. Right. So I, that that's what's so kind of fucked up about the situation. But it it, it happens, and there you go, bro. It's just, yeah, I, I I I am not wasting my energy on him, right? Like I said, because I've done had several interviews that this situation came up. Some of them, the interview was strictly because of this, and but my thing is this. I came home within a week. I tried to get closure on that. Right. It wasn't what I wanted, but at least it allowed me to have a dialogue with him and to be like, yo, I'm here. Like, cause honestly I wasn't threatening him, but I was prepared. Like, yo, if anything go wrong, be like, yo, listen, meet me. Cause I, I you know, I thought he was still in the Bronx. I thought he was still in either wall. Like, yo, listen. right. Right. Yo, we can just do this, man. Straight hand to hand, like man, we ain't gotta put no weapons in it. Boom. And because I wanted my justice somehow. Right. It didn't happen that way. He was out of state. I I took my focus on, yo, time to live. Right. You know, start doing my thing. But then it, it, it came up. I wanted to get into the YouTube life anyway, and then someone told me, yo, they spoke to, because King Erna was the first person that I spoke to. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw a bunch of your, I saw a bunch of videos of you out there talking about the paperwork and, and, uh, you know, that's during the height where I guess, you know, he was doing his thing and he was trying to get the whole Rockefeller thing out, you know what I'm saying, about right. Dame and, and, you know, and how, how Jay and them, you know, was doing them wrong and shit like that. So and then I saw you come behind it, and then I, I thought it. I I didn't even know he. To be honest, I didn't know Joe. No Joe was still around. Shit, I thought after when you came out and dropped that paperwork, and it you know it went viral. I thought that's what it was. So you know that's why I said like it's kind of messed up because at the end of the day, shit, you can't change the past. You know what I'm saying? It happened. So at least like you said, you just want closure. At least he can reach out to you and be like, you know what? I I see what you're saying now. Oh, he could have been like, man, and then you'll really get your answer. Man, I was scared as hell, man. I ain't right. want to tell I ain't want to tell that shit. But I was scared. He could have said, I was scared of you. I was scared of you. I was scared you gonna whoop my ass. It just don't sound right. Like you told him to tell some shit, and he told something totally different. 
and then try to recant all that shit. That shit, that yo, shit. Yo, 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 you know what's so funny about this shit, yo? I'm about to show it again. Yo, hold on, let me, let me, um, yo, I'm about to show it again. This nigga, yo, this, yo, this nigga, yo, I'm about, hold on, let me show this shit, yo. I'm about to show. I'm about to show from the part where he was. Where he was like, "Oh, I, I read. I didn't read. I read it, yo." Yeah, I saw that once on his live a long time. It was like a year or so ago, something like that. I saw. It. He was like, "Yeah, I rap, but I, I, I didn't rap." And I, he was trying to clean the shit up. Like I said, that motherfucker told man. Oh, here we go. We go right here. We go right here. Nobody. No, I told one of the nigga that's a fucking. I, I did. Yo, yeah, y'all niggas saying y'all thinking because he killed a nigga that he's a real nigga. And I told on a real nigga. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I, I didn't tell on nobody. No, I told on a nigga that's a fucking. I there we go. <laughs> that's funny as hell. Yo, that nigga was like, I, I told him, I didn't tell, I, did, I told him, I didn't tell, I told Nigga, Yo, he was, he was, he was on live, drunk. Like I, I, I had him, I had him, I had his head messed up when I first came. <laughs> yeah, you had him, you had his head messed up. I ain't gonna lie, cause you know he was already into that, that hiding shit anyway. So you know what I'm saying, doing all them goddamn pop ups. He was doing pop ups on the road. Yeah, but um, I, like I said, I, I even, I think it was BLK. Dot com. I can't remember totally, but remember I was talking to you, I was telling you that um King Erna was supposed to fight Little Alpo, and I, I reached out to them, and they was like, listen, if you can make it happen with Choke, boom, we'll put you on. Yeah. I, I reached out to my boy. I told him. I said, listen, and I, I'm keeping it thorough with it. I was like, listen, you tell him I'm challenging him. He could do all the stuff he want to do for a hype. Like, if you want to make a record, you can make a record. You can make your post and all that, calling me out, doing all this. Do whatever you want to, to generate the buzz. But when we get in that ring, I'm going to try to hurt you. If that part, you know, you know how the wrestlers right. do all the fake hype. hype, right, hype, hype, fake you shit. Want. right. All you want. Boom. But when we get in there, I'm not joking with you. And, and he told him, he was like, nah, he, he ain't doing it. But then he want to get on uh, um, one of his um, posts, uh, um, working out and got his boxing gloves and all. Dudes was like, "Yo, he got boxing gloves. He might be uh, a training and then try to accept your challenge closer to the day." I was like, "It don't matter. It don't matter. What he right. does, whatever he does, I'm ready for." Him. But he didn't do it. But that would have been. And I said, "Listen, it ain't about the money." I said, "I would actually." Um, donate like we could do money from for, for charity correct i just wanted to to be able to clear my name meaning the, the stuff that he tried to shoot out there about a, a, a rat a, a bug out a, all types of stuff he tried to say yeah. clearly no i ain't no bug out boom i wanted to clear that up and also actually promote myself my image because i've been doing talks to people about prison and decision making and motivating people and that would help my program and it's like listen and if i can give to charity find a charitable organization to donate to that's even better right so it would have been a win-win if he what i wasn't going to judge what he did if he wanted to take the money and put it in his pocket that's on you i, I ain't mad at that right Right. Do whatever yeah, you can yeah, to yeah. promote what you're doing. Yeah, hey, bro. Tell me what you're doing now, though. Let me know what you're doing now. Uh, right now I have I have a vending machine route. I used to have a car wash. I sold a car wash. I got a vending machine route. Basically, the vending machine route is different businesses have my vending machines there. Their their business, like for instance, I got a nursing home, a couple of nursing homes, a couple of bus stations a couple of housing developments where they have a, a vending machine in the community room. 
I have snacks, sodas, and stuff like that. I come collect the money, put the stuff in there, and I, I'm doing, like I just said, uh, uh, motivational speaking. Um, I have a business called Black Wall Street Private Lenders Corporation. And my aim with that, the reason why I named it Black Wall Street is because Tulsa, Oklahoma, before either of us were born, it had an area that the dollar circulated hundreds of times before it left the community. And right. I wanted to be able to help black entrepreneurs, minority entrepreneurs, or minority people in general to get into entrepreneurship. Correct. When the pandemic took place and everybody was locked down, there was a um a website a Facebook group called damn I'm trying to think of it it was um blackout blackout coalition something like that and mm -hmm. they were talking about not buying from other people so on and so forth and we we're talking about establishing black owned so I'm like listen we need to have our own bank, have our own, you know, financial structure. And people agreed, but they was like, yeah, who's going to do it? Who's who, who, who? Nobody, everybody agreed, but nobody wanted to pull a trigger. Right. So I, I set up my company and I'm not going to sit here and say, I got a thousand people coming to, to get loans through me because I don't, I don't have that. One thing about me is that I'm a go-getter, but sometimes I'm running and I don't have everything all together. So what I mean by That's that is right. I got a YouTube channel, but I don't know how to promote it like y'all. Maybe it's just simply time. Maybe, you know, things come with time. Yeah, facts. And I know this, but there's people that I've helped because I've helped businesses. I just didn't do it to the degree that I'm happy with. I want right. to help. Um, like, for instance, I was telling the brother earlier, I went online, biz.net. There's, there's a bunch of them where you can look for businesses and businesses that are already in existence and they are for sale. Now, I've started, I have a business crimey residential services that I started from the ground up doing uh, lawn mowing services, in right. cleaning, clean outs. I still own that business. Right. Now, I struggle with that. Like I, I, I went from the bottom, like I was taking, I was doing yards for $30 just to get my name out there and getting people to refer me to other people. Now, I bought a car wash, which was a business that already existed. Made a hundred thousand plus first year. I said, hold on a second. I think I got it. Instead of me struggling all these years, because I, I, I've had the other business for over five years now. I'm doing all right. Right. But why struggle? If Correct. you're able to buy something that already has clientele, already has some cash flow, get in it. Everybody don't have the money for that. And that's where the lenders come in. Right. If if your credit score ain't the way you want it to be, we can help with that. So there's no reason. And like, like you can start off with $200 like I did and, and work your way up to 50, 60, 70,000 and take five, six, seven years. Be my guest. Or you can get your credit together, get a loan, buy a business that already makes 40000 50000 100000 a year. And it's not saying that you are on easy street because depending on the, the, the business, you got overhead. Correct. So, you know, I, there's months that I made 20000 in a month. But then when you look at my overhead... I might have spent 12000 that month. So right. you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like, yo, the numbers sound good, 
But then you look at, okay, what are you spending? Right. So I, I want my peoples to be in better positions to do that as opposed to everybody's uh, worried about the next nine to five. If you're living paycheck to paycheck and something happens at your job, whether it be a conflict or just be them downsizing, uh, you're out. What are you going to do now? If you have your own, yo, it's, it's, it's really a blessing to be able. I went to Vegas last weekend. Uh, August, I, I went to Puerto Rico for a week. I went camping for three days. I went to Vegas for four days. And this is just in August. And still made money. I, it, it, there was no interruption with, with cash flow. And if you're a boss, a business owner, and you put your so – I'm not a millionaire. I'm not. But we need to have ourselves where we can live. I spent right. almost 26 years in prison. It's time for me to live. Yeah, no, that's true. You know what I'm saying? So – that's why I make these moves and I promote it to other people like, yo, listen, man, you ain't got to be that nine to five. If you want to work nine to five, cool. If you have to work nine to five, that's a problem. I'm 50 years old. I'm 50. On my 50th birthday, I don't know how much you know about me or how little you know about me, brother. But you know what I bought myself for my 50th birthday? What's that? A Bentley. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Now, that's not bragging. That's just saying, listen, uh, I didn't uh, put in uh, my uh, work. Let me, let me show, I'm going to show right now, bro. One second. Yeah. You can't see it. Yeah, yeah, nothing show. It disappeared. The whole phone disappeared. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me show you a Bentley, bro. Hold on one second. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a nice Bentley. It's a, a, a GTC, a convertible. Yeah, okay, okay. Limited edition. It's only 80 of them was made. Only 80 of them was made? Yeah. Okay. So my, my thing was this. I done did that time. I did the time, of course. Now, right. I came home. I bust my ass. And a lot of people, we all going to die someday. Right. Um, And you can't take it with you. There's, there's, there's no, no hearse pulling the U-Haul. Nope. So you can't take it with you. That's right. Is, I've been home seven years. January will make eight. Boom. And I bust my ass. And I've been trying, and I say try because I haven't been successful to the degree that I want. I don't like saying the word try. And I've been trying to tell brothers that I know that did time and did the set and the third to step their game up and do some of this entrepreneur legal stuff now some of these same brothers that i've been inviting to come let's work this way they're not listening no but, but when 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 i was I, I wish the brother was still on a on a, um the 10 toes he he knows me in in auburn i was a big drug dealer boom so dudes that I was able to give packages to and set up shop, and they'll do that with no, no reservation. Yo, I want you to do this. Are we going to do this on this block? Are we going to do this? Okay. Now I'm talking about, not only am I talking about legal stuff, but I'm talking about way bigger money. Way bigger money. The, law, the ending process. That's what they don't understand. And I'm, I'm dealing with that moving here where I just moved back down south. And people want to hold your past. And I tell them, man, I, I live for the right now, man. I don't live in the past, man. The past 
you think about it when you sit back and you think, man, we actually, like you say, you get more money now than you ever had because at the end of the day, it's like shit, shit is legal now. And, and, and you can move and you can sleep better too. Yeah. Like I had a Honda Accord. I got, I got, you look at my driveway, three Benzes, a BMW, a Bentley, and my work van. <laughs> And say, and what you're saying, your work van, your best, your best vehicle. That's that's it, because that's what brings the money. That's what makes me be able mm-hmm. to afford the, the Bentley and, uh, and the Benz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's real spill. That's real talk. That's real talk. Yeah. Yo, but you know, it's like it's. Remember, I, I'm not sure how old you are, but you may be old enough to. Yeah, I'm forty. I'm forty five. Uh, you might be old enough. There was a phrase. It was from a commercial. When EF Hutton talks, what's the what's what's the ending of that? Yeah, you're a little too young. Yeah, I don't know. When EF Hutton talks, people listen. Oh yeah, people listen. I was just about to say, people listen. You now, listen. My thing is, I I want to be when Johnny Bunting Jr. talks, people listen. Right. Only way they're going to listen is because they see results. Correct. I was talking the talk and telling people this, telling people this, telling people this, and they wasn't listening. I bought my wife an ML350 for Christmas. See? And 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 some people, oh, yo, good looking. Yo, wow. Boom. I have family members like, oh, that's, that's good looking. That's Christmas that just passed. December. That's right. February, my birthday. Bought a Bentley. People start, yo, listen, I, I have family members that finally was like, yo, listen, what, what I need to do, get your EIN, get your, your, get your business certificate, yep. get yourself up a, a business bank account, and people are now starting to do it. Well, and you know wife- what? I tell people all the time, man, I said, that's the new the new age of, of having your freedom papers. That's your freedom papers. You know, back then you had to have papers to see if it was free. The LLC and your EIN, I mean, that's your freedom papers because that separates you from the ones that are enslaved. Yep. Yo, I went, I spent a week in Puerto Rico. I went to a family reunion, met some family. One of my cousins owned a house in Puerto Rico. I said, I wanted to go to Puerto Rico. I was like, yo, I'll pay you to rent your house. You got a yeah. penthouse. I went, I went to Puerto Rico, stayed in a penthouse for a week with a vehicle, and we learned Puerto Rico is not a state. They don't pay state taxes. They don't pay federal taxes. Huh. And that means that the price of things are much lower. Lower. Because That's right. those taxes are not a part of the equation. Correct. Property is one of the things that's cheaper. Vehicles are cheaper. So mm-hmm. we set up an LLC. We got a... a there's a um, some paperwork we got to file in order to allow our corporation. When you're dealing with states, I'm not sure how much you know and you know, but it doesn't matter. But listeners, for the listeners' sake, um, mm-hmm. if you're not from that state or that region, you're foreign. Correct. So it's like so we have to put in paperwork so that a foreign business can do business. In Puerto Rico, once you and, have- and I heard and I heard you I heard you say something about because a lot of people don't know that too. I mean, it's the first step would be LLC, and then the next thing would be the corporation, and then there are so those are two different entities, right? But I but I know a lot of people say you can get like what is a LLC, and then you can do what you want to do. What is it? Um, um, what is it before then where you can take it with almost like a trust? You see what yeah. I'm saying? Where you can have an overseer that that disperse that money, so you never get. You know how they go with the, yeah. when it comes to doing you, that. You can, as a I, LLC, you can basically hire yourself. Correct. So it's 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 different ways, and it's tax advantages. Yeah, when you're doing it. So there's different ways to structure it, so that not only will you be able to separate yourself from liability. Correct if happens. But you be able to separate your business from tax liability the way you do it. It's it's a it's a mean game and oh, yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah, I mean that's what made me get my LLC when I looked at the difference between having um, four hundred write-offs if me being the employer than the employee when you only got seven to eight write-offs. But when you're the employer, you have almost up to four hundred tax write-off breaks. Your your vehicle, like if you pay tax, if you got a note and you pay taxes on your vehicle, you write that off. You write those yeah. stuff off. Oh, it's it's a it's a lot of benefits to be in the business as opposed to being the worker. Right, There's a lot of benefits. Um, cash flow is one of them. Right, but a lot of times we are taught from the public fool system. We are taught how to be workers. Mm -hmm. So we have to step out of the box sometimes. Uh, it's your own independent searching, meaning if you want to go right. online, you want to buy books. I'm this is a term called autodidactic. Okay. Autodidactic just means self taught. Correct. I, I get books. Before I came home, I, I was locked in a box for my last six years of my bed. I was ordering books for Amazon. Google, Facebook, um, Twitter. Now, I'm not a master to none of these things. But when I stepped out the door, they weren't foreign to me. Correct. It was like, okay, it wasn't like, oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? I had, I got locked up before cell phones, before the internet, before all of that. But when I came home, I knew a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but everybody left me. Oh. <laughs> right. So that's that's my thing. I I've I have my past, sold drugs, did this, did this. Yes, I did that. But now in this day and age, the movement, the the new hustle, the old hustle for me was drugs, yeah. selling drugs, doing this, that, and the third. The new hustle with me now is businesses, entrepreneurship. You, you want to establish clients. You want to uh, uh, get more companies. You can buy a company for thirty thousand. Right, That's a lot of money. The average person, if your if your credit score is half as decent, you can get a thirty thousand dollar loan. Right, and with with a, a a decent rate of paying it back as far as your monthly payment. But if you're getting a loan to buy a business, the business should make the money to pay it back. That's a fact. Instead of just dumping in the money. So you said, so if you can shout out that link for the people in the chat and for the audience, what what did you say? You could go if you wanted to find a place where you can buy a business, right. offer a business. All right. I know one of them is biz.net. Biz.net. Okay. Biz.net. But there's a bunch of them. So if you say... Um, if you put in your search bar, I want to buy a business or like for me, what I did was when I wanted to buy a vending machine route, I've been wanting to do this from when I first came home. I just didn't have enough money to do it. Right. So if you say, um, I want to buy a, a bread route because I was looking at that as well. And then they'll say bizbroker.net, biz.net, such and such, a, a bunch of them will pop up. And then you click it, you go through it, you see what's for sale, laundromats, gas stations. There's the, the reason why I opted for the vending machines over the bread truck, the bread truck make more money. So I really was seriously considering it, but this is my own personal. Anybody else might see it different. Right. I had to choose the vending machine because time. The bread thing would have been like four or five days a week. You got to wake up early, like four something in the morning to, to get out there and, and do your deliveries. And you'd be done by like one, two. So you, you have the rest of your day. But day offs, meaning if you got four days a week, them four days is them four days. So 
they, rain, sleet, hail, snow, them four days got to get done. So if you don't have right. someone that you can put out there to do it, then you got to do it. So like I said, I spent a week in Puerto Rico. It would have been like, I can't do a week. I got to do three days because the other four days I got to do this. I needed to be able to have something going on where I can go and do vacations and live and still make money. So a vending machine is good for that because I stock it and walk away. Right. Is and and several of the places where I have it, like I said, is nursing homes. So that that's open twenty four hours. Correct. So there's stuff going on. Somebody's hungry right now. They go in there. Boom. Get a soda, some snacks. And some of the other places that are regular businesses, they're closed now. But while I'm gone. And vacationing, cool. But you might say, listen, I think I can get a hundred thousand dollar loan. Right. To get, this, to get this bread truck. You got the truck, you got the route, it make about three hundred a year, you know, boom, you may end up with a net of seventy. Good. And what I mean by that is net is net profit, because you always gotta keep in mind that someone listening may not understand what I'm saying. So when you're dealing with profit, you're dealing with gross and you're dealing with net gross is the the total money that you made. Net is what you made when you take away expenses. So at the end of the day, you'd be like, well, listen, I had to spend this because you got to buy the stuff. So what you make after you, you take away your expenses is your net. Like I said, laundromats, gas stations, bread routes, vending machine routes. They even have ATMs. I looked at that, but there's something extra that you have to sign up for when you got an ATM. And money is starting to become obsolete anyway, so ATM to me wouldn't be the right thing. It's it's one thing to uh, spend your money on something that's going to keep going, but if you spend $20,000 on an ATM route and then next year they say no more money, we right. do electronic, then you'd have wasted your money. You didn't even make your money back. True. So my thing is, I want us all to get money and do it in a sensible way because my thing is, as a people, we need to be able to have places where we live in that is not called the projects. <laughs> right. I, I, I live in a, in a nice residential suburban area but it's diverse it's diverse you know what i'm saying I, yeah. I i'm not mad at it i'm not mad at it i got a, a black to this side uh indian on this side puerto rican asian i i'm fine i'm not prejudiced correct but i would like to be able to have a a, a development all right um Co-op City. Y'all, y'all know about Co-op City? Yes. Yes. Imagine a, a Co-op City that's upscale and nothing but nothing but blacks. Hundred thousand dollar apartments, two hundred thousand dollar apartments. No, you, you 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 see the uh, the garage. You got Porsches, Bentleys, Ferraris. All sorts of upscale vehicles. You got doormen. You know, no graffiti, no shooting, and it's all black. Right. No, that's a fact. We we have to level up as far as the way we think, because that's what it boils down to. If if you think your area is no good, then it's easy to piss in the elevator. <laughs> this this ain't nothing anyway. And a lot of times people who do this conduct, they don't own it. It's easier to pee in the elevator when you don't got no stake in the game. Correct. <laughs> like, yo, so what? Like, boom. You ain't gonna pee. Like, I'm gonna pee in my own elevator. Nah. <laughs> so that's that's how I'm looking at it. I want us all to step our game up and we get money. I was telling the brother. Uh, one of the things I was looking at was actually creating an actual channel. Like, we got a lot of brothers that got their numbers up on YouTube. Yeah. 
YouTube, YouTube gives a check. I don't know how much it's, I don't got my numbers up to that degree where YouTube gives me nothing. Right. Luckily, I don't need that to eat. <laughs> right. right, right. If we had these guys with numbers collectively got together and we got a, a station, now you're looking at ad revenue as opposed to cash apps and, and, and YouTube. No, you're right. Now we can do something big. And, and just like how we got, you got an artist, I got an artist, you got, now we got a place where we can put our artists on. We could do live shows. Right. Yeah. Like, right. we could do something really big and do specials, do all sorts of stuff because you'd have the platform for it and you'd have the revenue coming from sponsors. Listen, right. if, if let's just say 10, if there was 10 YouTubers that all of them had uh, um, 10,000 plus subscribers. And so if, if you got 10 YouTubers, 10,000 plus subscribers, then you're coming to the table with 100 plus already. Right. Subscribers. And you're like, listen, um, we're going to put some content on. We're going to reach out to some black people that we know that do shows like I'm talking about like movies like other 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 things that isn't live reality correct so, and now you put together uh, just like uh, just like a TV guide all right at such and such time is your slot at such and such time so like have- like almost like bring back the jet magazine type feel right and it's like okay um BET has been watered down to it should be called yeah. white WET. Yeah. Cool. So, but in its heyday, imagine boom, that but on online being able to have commercials. Because that's where the big money's at. The ads. Uh, well, I think one of the things we gotta get past too as men is that. You know, a lot of times that pride things or, you know, which one is the biggest chief instead of no Indians. You know, it, everybody can win if every, you know, it's like the arm, the right arm can't do what the left arm do. But the problem with us, we want to be the left and the right arm. And I think and we can collectively do it because we all are logical enough to make it happen. But what happens is pride always the first step to a downfall. And, and and it's for some reason, whether it be the outside entities or whatever, they know that that, could, that is the, one of the wedges. It, it won't be nothing else. But all they got to do is whisper to somebody and be like, hey, man, you know, you really bring the show together. Or, man, you do this. And that's what we have to collectively understand. Like you said, you don't go by nobody else. If, if you read the person, now at the age we know, we can truly self-identify what we want to be around. And I think now is the you know the amp time to do it because again that's what it's all about man then that's why these young brothers killing each other because they don't know how to self-identify because if you look at yourself in the mirror and i see you and you see me regardless if i see another one that looks just like you how can i hate you right how can i have strife envy jealousy it, it shouldn't play a part when I don't have the same strife, jealousy, and envy towards another culture the way I have to my own. Think about it. We're the only ones that want to go out there and say we're going to push somebody that looks just like push or take their top off. Right. So, yeah. you know. But but I think we're on the right path, man. I, you know, that's some deep stuff that you said, though. Real talk. Yeah. I'm serious, man. It, it can be done. It can be done. And I understand you may have some. Let somebody got a hundred thousand subscribers themselves. They may be like, I don't need y'all. All right, cool. You stay over there and watch. They got people. They got three types of people in this world: people who make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who wonder what happened. You sit over there, and next thing you yep. know, you're gonna wonder what happened, and you want to get in. There's people that. This is this is something that real life, real life. I came home, I had an idea. I told my family, listen, we need to get together. 
uh, come up with a dollar amount that we want to raise uh, because, so that we can go into business. And then monthly, we'll mathematically, depending on how many people we have and depending on how long it's going to take to raise the money, we'll break it all down mathematically. And then everybody would have to pay in each month like it's a bill. Right. Everybody liked it. When I said, all right, now let's get to the point where we do the numbers and start putting in, everybody had an excuse. Oh, I can't do this. I got this. I got this. I got this. I got this. I was like, all right, well, all right, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go on my own. Now, three businesses later, <laughs> now people, oh, hey, 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 hey. Like, just because I'm coming to you to get with me doesn't mean I need you. Right. It, it would be better if we work together. But if you say no, I'm not going to just stay in one spot. I'm going to progress regardless. I could probably move faster with an army than by myself. But even if I don't have an army, I'm going to keep on trudging, like keep on going. So there you have it, bro. Yo. Doing this show, Mr. King, New Jersey's BTB TV. Yo, um, Johnny Button Jr., I salute you, bro. You kept it real. You told your story. I respect that. And hey, yo, every Friday from now on, we're gonna promote something. And I'm gonna have you on my show. Sounds great. You know what Sounds I mean? Good. To everybody in the chat, thank you for coming up. We got two hours in. Yes, and sir. We, and we doing our thing, yo. So, Already. So, yo, 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 yo. Force, we definitely going to build you on the, out, on the outside. You know what I mean? All right. So, yeah. Your heart closing. Yo, I'm still waiting for my, uh, my, my, my uh, questions, nigga. And I do, like I said, I was in Jersey today. I I, I go through Jersey frequently, bro. Like, we could, we could chop it up, have lunch or dinner or something. I ain't hard to find. Yeah, I live in PA now, but I, I still be in Jersey every other weekend. All right. Well, we'll 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 link up. I I really appreciate it, man, because you came you came to me out of nowhere and like, yo, bro, like, <laughs> hey, so that was real. You, that was real. Yo, I salute. Salute, Kings. Salute, yo, brothers. All right. right. Next Friday. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. All right. You already know. All right. Later. Please. Later. Yo. Yo. Yo.